Thanks, everyone. Good morning. Um, this digital rectal examination is um, so it always brings out a laugh. I was doing a rectal examination on a guy, and you know he's lying on his side. I've got my finger up his bum, trying to concentrate on what I'm doing. And he says, "You know, doc, it's great." And I said, "What?" And he said, "Everything's on digital these days." <laughs> you just got to carry on. I have a confession to make. I'm not an expert in supplements. So when Nader rang me and said, can you do this talk on supplements? My initial reaction was, oh, you know, I've got to go and research this. I can't just do it off the top of my head. Um, but then I thought, well, it is an important question. And what if I was, uh, what if I was a guy, I'm 52, what if I was a guy, my PSA has gone up, I've come to see a urologist and uh, I've got prostate cancer. And I'm going through these you know, stages of trying to work out what to do. What would I do if I wanted to go and get a supplement? Well, how would I do that? So I thought, well, maybe I will, I will go along those lines. Um, so we know some of these things. The one in eight men or one in nine will be diagnosed with prostate cancer. Uh, one in 27 will die from it. Therefore, as we said, we'll have men diagnosed but not necessarily dying from it. Um, if we find it early, we can cure it. Uh, but there are side effects, and Rob spoke about those, and there's certainly lots of potential side effects. And also about one in three after treatment will get a recurrence um, in their lifetime. So these younger men that we treat, who then we sort of think we've cured, as we wait the time the PSA may rise. So what don't we know? And this is something you always have to ask yourself in life. What do I think I know? But more importantly, what don't I know? And when I saw this picture, I thought, yeah, I know that one. We've all seen that, that movie. But I couldn't remember which movie it was. Which movie was it? Goldfinger, yeah, well done. But you know, you, you see, you think, yeah, it's a James Bond movie, famous scene, but I can't remember. So who will have issues from the cancer is what we don't know. You may have the cancer, but you may not have problems from it. Who will get a recurrence? So once we treat this cancer, um, will you actually have a problem with it in your lifetime? And who will get which side effects? For example, if you get some of those minor urinary symptoms, you might say that's okay. However, if you are running a mum and dad sort of shop front, say at Port Central, and you can't go to the toilet because you just can't, um, it is an issue. If you're at home, you're retired, it's probably less of an issue. Erectile dysfunction, we sort of you know, put it aside and say, well, you're getting older, erectile dysfunction is a sign of aging. But for some men, it is extremely devastating, and they don't talk about it, and that's, uh, that's very sad. How will they cope? We don't really know that either. And what other conditions will they get? What we call competing interests, the heart disease, stroke, other cancers that might be a bigger threat to them than this prostate cancer. Well, heart disease is a good example. If you turn to your right or your left, um, the person you're looking at, one of them or yourself will die from heart disease. The risk is one in two. Therefore, as you get older, your risk of heart disease, stroke, are also significant risk factors for you. So you start looking into this issue, and some men do suffer with this. The more they look into it, the more they struggle, because they learn that there is a lot they don't know, a lot they thought they knew, but a lot they don't know. Prevention is the only way for many things. Um, this doesn't necessarily prevent prostate cancer. Go for it. Nader's already spoke about the fact that the only way to prevent this is to actually remove the source of testosterone uh, when you're a very young man, but we can't do that either. So then why do we take supplements? Why do we get to this point where we get a condition, whether it's cancer or something else, why do we take supplements? Because it's a huge market. I wondered about that, I looked it up, and I think one of it relates to the fact that we like to take charge of our health. When, when the crunch comes, we do like to do something about it. So we want to do something about it, and there we go looking for it. At the end of the day, we also know that this is a 1 in 8 risk or a 1 in 27 risk or a 5%. So we want to have that edge. We don't want to be the one person who's going to get the problem. So we look for it. We want to be that X percent that doesn't get the problem or doesn't get the recurrence. And we do worry about this one. We worry about our doctors who have missed something. There's certainly enough stuff in the media to make us think about the fact that just because you might be seeing someone who's very good, that what if they have missed something in your case because they were in a rush or they didn't look at it carefully enough. So we worry about that too. And we also, I think, do believe that there's some, there must be something to the hype in the marketing. How can all this marketing be out there and, and yet none of it be true? There's got to be something to it. And this one we know, Joe down the street, um, you know, who got the carrot machine and was doing the carrot juice and cured himself from whatever cancer that Joe had. But what we don't know is the detail of Joe's disease, 
But we do know that there were these stories of people who had cancer, did something, and then got better. This is more the sort of stuff I think Rosemary may talk about. But if we look at fat, for example, specifically with regard to prostate cancer, saturated fats are bad. They just are. Um, they do increase the free radical activity. Free radicals are those things that um, damage cells, natural cells, and it's part of the breakdown of, of metabolism, what we call metabolism, that the end products of fat are potentially harmful as the fat is used in the body and broken down. Those end products from that process are dangerous. And that being overweight is bad, and that almost directly relates to fat consumption. So that's bad. Well, then we say, well, why don't I just have margarine or some other version of this fat? Well, the, the, the reality is it's still fat. And uh, if you're going to have fat and limit the amount of fat you have, well, maybe then just have natural fats and limit the intake of all fats in general. Now, if we look at zinc, this is one of those that comes up in prostate disease. And maybe the reason it's come up is because it's in seminal fluid. However, kids, look at your iPads. If um, you are, unless you're ejaculating all over the house every day, uh, you're not going to be zinc deficient. It just won't happen. You have got trace elements of this metal in, uh, in uh, your body, and it comes from a lot of stuff that we would eat. So there, there isn't as an epidemic of zinc deficiency. You don't need a lot of it. You need trace elements of it. And there is no direct role that it has uh, anything to do with prostate cancer, but people take it for their prostate. Phytoestrogens are plant estrogens. Um, they, estrogen is the female hormone, so it counteracts the male hormone. Soy is a good source of that. Um, and soy can delay the progression of PSA, and that's because of this estrogenic effect or this female hormone effect. So your PSA can actually drop as you use soy products. Um, there's no safety issues with soy. Um, it may be helpful. It's certainly good for other things with regard to health, but a lot of people don't like soy and they don't like uh, moving on from dairy milk to soy, and that's fine. And like many of these uh, things that are produced, sometimes we do get contaminants, and there was a huge problem with one product of soy milk at one point that made many people very sick. What about vegetarians? Well, at the end of the day, vegetarians just have a better cancer risk profile. They just do. We have to accept that. Um, there's something about being a vegetarian that makes you healthier. They have a better heart risk profile. They have a better stroke risk profile. This is when blood clots or blockages in the circulation of the brain cause a very serious illness. And they just seem to have a better everything risk profile. So there's something to increasing your, your vegetable content in your diet. Lycopene is another one that comes up. This is the tomato sauce story. Uh, it's a red pigment in the skin of tomatoes. It's mainly the sources. The skin needs to be cooked uh, for this to happen rather than fresh tomatoes. But once again, um, there is probably no need to overdo it. You can access it through tomato sources like pasta sources. You don't necessarily need to go and buy lycopene as a supplement. Fish oil is another one. Many people will swear by this, uh, particularly for their joints. They'll say, I take the fish oil and it really does work, doc. That's good. Um, it is also a natural blood thinner, and it has a role to play in that regard. But you've seen the marketing of fish oil accelerate to krill oil and super-duper fish oil. I don't know how many fish you need to eat in a day, but there really is, seems to be a mega super-duper fish oil that might come from a very large octopus that's the next thing you could get. So there needs to be some common sense with the marketing. Interestingly, last year, the United States Federal Drug Administration issued a warning with regard to fish oil and prostate cancer. It takes a lot of evidence to push through a warning like that. So if you think you're taking fish oil for your prostate cancer, maybe you're taking it for your joints as well, be mindful. Also be mindful of where your fish oil is coming from. If it's coming from the southern oceans of Tasmania and manufactured well, it's probably fine. If it's coming from polluted ponds in, Th in Thailand, then it does matter because it may be contaminated. Selenium is another one that comes up. Again, another trace element. So this is stuff we just need a tiny amount. Reg reg oh, you all right? 